The Human Rights Council is the main United Nations body dealing with human rights. Established in 2006, the Human Rights Council meets in Geneva, Switzerland for a minimum of 10 weeks a year. The Council is made up of governments and has a geographically diverse and rotating membership of 47 states. Members are elected for a term of three years by the General Assembly in New York. In September 2009, the Council met for its 12th regular session under the leadership of Ambassador Alex van Merwen of Belgium. During the three-week session, all human rights issues, including the most controversial and difficult issues, were aired and discussed with dignity, decorum and respect, which is the spirit in which the Council operates. The Conseil des Droits de l'Homme est le lieu où toutes les positions touchant aux droits de l'Homme sont débattues. Néanmoins, de telles discussions, si elles peuvent être directes, franches, transparentes, doivent répondre à certaines exigences en termes de langage utilisé, de dignité et de respect. Increasingly, the Council is addressed at the highest level. Visiting dignitaries at this session included Her Royal Highness Princess Bajra Kitty Abar of Thailand and ministers from Sri Lanka and the United States of America. The High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Pillay, is the top United Nations official on human rights. As part of her leadership role, the High Commissioner engages with the Human Rights Council and provides regular updates on the work of her office in promoting and protecting all human rights and ensuring dignity and justice for all of us. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Human Rights Council, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of my first anniversary in office, allow me to discuss the salient human rights issues that have shaped the past eventful 12 months uh, and that are likely to remain of the utmost concern for the human rights community in the foreseeable future. Every year the Council is updated on human rights issues by experts who are independent of the United Nations and are internationally recognized authorities in a given field of work. Each expert is appointed by the body to look into a specific human rights issue. During the 12th session, the Council held discussions with the individual experts on the issues of children in armed conflict, slavery, sale of children, water, toxic wastes, indigenous peoples and anti-discrimination. The Council also holds panel discussions on issues of concern to the membership. On the 17th of September 2009, the Council debated the issue of migrants and detention centres. A second panel later in the session debated gender-related issues. In addition to the yearly regular sessions held each March, June and September, the Council can meet in an emergency session with the support of at least one-third of its membership. Among the outcomes of its ninth such emergency session was the establishment of an independent, international, fact-finding mission, which was requested by the Council to report back on its findings. The report of the mission was presented by Justice Richard Goldstone on 29 September 2009. Let me repeat before this Council what I have already stated on many occasions. We accepted this mission because we believe deeply in the rule of law, humanitarian law, human rights, and the principle that in armed conflict, civilians should be, to the greatest extent possible, protected from harm. We accepted with the conviction that pursuing justice is essential and that no state or armed group should be above the law. Failing to pursue justice for serious violations during any conflict will have deeply corrosive effects on international justice. On that day, the Council also heard an update by the High Commissioner. Following this, the Council held a debate in which the countries concerned, members of the Council, observer governments and representatives of civil society all participated. By the end of its third week and after intense diplomatic negotiations, the Council adopted some 47 decisions and resolutions ranging from the elimination of discrimination by persons affected by leprosy, to freedom of opinion and expression, to access to medicine. 
Among the new initiatives was the decision to elevate the status of some of the forthcoming panel discussions to include the participation of the most senior government officials. The meetings of the Human Rights Council may be followed live on the World Wide Web. To view statements delivered at previous meetings, please visit the archive at